Hi, my name is Ann Edenfield Sweet. I'm the executive director and founder of Wings for Life International. And I am so proud that tonight we have Ken Jackson with us. He's going to talk about the laws of success. We all need that, don't we? Uh, I'm so proud to say that Ken is not only the founder of the KJ Effect, a speaker, a motivational speaker, uh, travels all over, um, encouraging and, and working with folks. He's had a variety of careers, and, and including 15 years at Intel, his own businesses, a variety of businesses, but now he also is on staff with Wings, so we're very excited to have him on staff with us. But tonight, we are gonna learn about the laws of success. So Ken, tell us about how we're gonna be more successful. All right, thank you so much, Ann. Uh, before I get started, I do want to give a, a huge thank you for, uh, to Ann and what she's been able to do with Wings for Life. Um, I'm excited for what the future holds uh, with my journey with Wings um, and everything that we can do for those that are in need. So um, I just want to say thank you to Ann and, and definitely appreciate uh, her giving me the opportunity to work with her. Now, before we get started, um, you know, the topic is laws of success, and these are just a few. And what I like to explain to people is it's very simple. Um, through, these, uh, through this course, what we're going to simply do is go over a few topics. Now, in front of you, you see that we're going to first talk about gravity, um, the things that you seek. We do want to touch on your vision and the slave. That one's kind of deep there. Your crew and then change in general. So when it comes to the, the laws of success, I want you to think about gravity, um, something that uh, we, we have to experience every single day we wake up, but we never really think about it. And what I mean by that is it's the same for everyone. It doesn't matter who you are, where you are, gravity is the same. And um, I want you to look at these laws the same way that you might look at gravity. It sounds kind of silly, but the fact of the matter is these laws, they apply to anyone. And um, the exciting part is that um, anyone can actually apply these laws because they have been written. They were written many years ago. And um, I want you to really take heed to, uh, to these laws, if you could, please. Now, these are just a few, um, some of the ones that I want to start out with, um, with you on this journey. But um, definitely, there are some other laws that we can follow that have been written. So the law of gravity, it's the same for everyone, Right. We experience it every day. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter what your race is. It doesn't matter. Any, nothing matters because we all experience that. And these laws, again, are the exact same. So when it comes to the law, first thing I want you to think about is what we seek. What are we after? Um, when it comes to school or it comes to a career or even a business, um, to seek. And uh, for me, through, you know, on my journey, um, going from the corporate world to the business life, I was seeking something else. And I want people to know that it's okay to seek more. But when it comes to seek, to define what that means. And the first thing is to decide, okay? What is it that you really want? And um, I went and I looked up the definition of seek, and the definition of a seek reads, attempt to find something, desire to obtain or achieve something. The one thing that I want you to know about this particular law or, or to seek, nowhere does it say sit at home and do nothing. Nowhere does it say wait for something to come to you. Um, a lot of people feel that, well, the life that you're in right now, God must have wanted you to have because um, this is where you are, and I just don't believe that. But if you can decide, first of all, on what you want, then you can actually get up and it will cause you to seek, actually take action is really what, what I'm getting at here. So when it comes to seek, let's look at the law itself. What are you seeking? A lot of people, you know, they want to win the, the lottery, but they have no idea what they do with the money, right? They want to be successful, but they don't even know what that definition means for them. So what are you actually seeking? Um, what are you asking for, right? The law is written. Seek and ye shall find. Ask and she... And, ye shall receive. But we don't even know what we want to ask for, right? I just want to win the lottery. I want, to, I want to be a millionaire. I want a big house. You don't know why. You don't know what it looks like because you're really not thinking about it. And then as you're seeking, one of the, the major problems is, right, we, we have to knock on doors, right? 
The law is written. What doors will you knock on? How many doors are you willing to go through? How many doors are you willing to go through being shut in your face before you quit? See, and if you can follow this law, seek and ye shall find. That means get up, take action, decide what you want, and take action towards that decision. But you're going to have to have that roadmap. You're going to have to figure out what it is that you want and the direction you want to go. So that's our first law. It's very simple. It applies to anyone. What is it that you seek? Make that decision, go after it, and start knocking on doors, and that door will be open. But the problem that people face, and I understand, is that we really don't want to get up to knock on any more doors, right? Those doors get closed in our faces because of our history, because of what we've been through. Um, we're afraid, right? And, and fear plays a large part in it. But if you can just follow that simple law to start out with, keep knocking on those doors, if there's a degree you want, go after it. It's not going to be easy. So, seeking ye shall find, knock on the door, it will be opened. Okay, let's take a look at the, ne the next law. Let's look at your vision. Now, this one was a big one for me. Um, being in the corporate world for so many years, um, maybe you uh, have experienced this, right? Your vision starts to go tunnel, right? You only see your next paycheck. This is the way I want you to look at this. Sight will allow you to see your next paycheck. But vision will allow you to see your future. So you have to decide what your vision is going to look like for you. No one else can decide that. So the law states, write the vision and make it plain on tablets. A lot of people say, well, I know, I know the future that I want. But see, the law states to make it plain on tablets. The law states to write it down. And what I want you to think about this is have a vision board. See, a lot of people are going to say, well, that's not possible. But if you can take that vision and you can actually put it down on paper, the car that you want, the color of the car, what do you want your house to look like? See, the picture you see in front of you to a lot of people, you may be thinking, mm, it's not going to happen. It can't happen, right? That's too nice. That doesn't happen for me. People like us, we don't get things like that. See, but you're not following the law. The law was written. If you make it plain, if you make the vision plain written on tablets, the law applies to you just like it applies to anybody else. If there is a degree that you want, you want to finish school, even, you know, it may be as simple as getting a GED, finishing high school, that's okay. But what I need you to do is start writing it down, okay? I need you to make that vision plain because the more that you can see it, the more you visualize what it is that you want, the, the better chance you're going to have at going after it. And I'm not saying this. The law was written. The law states very clearly, make the vision plain on tablets. Write it down. Make the list of what it is that you want. If you say you want to win the lottery, you, you, want a million, you want to be a millionaire, whatever the case may be, regardless of what anyone says, see, I didn't listen to everyone when they said it can't happen. When they, when they ask me, why would I quit a company? Um, you know, you're, you're silly for quitting. Why would you walk out? You know, look at the money and everything else. I made my vision plain on tablets. So I began to seek out once I made the decision. Then I took the action. And I'm just following the law as it's written. And after a while, I knocked on doors and knocked on doors, and the blessings started coming through. They started coming through. Those doors began to open. Now, is it going to happen immediately? Absolutely not. Is it going to be hard? Absolutely. There are going to be those tough days just like anything else. Here, let me put it to you like this. Being successful is hard. Being poor is hard. Being broke is hard. Choose your hard. I'd rather choose the first. If, if that's the end result, if happiness, and I'm not saying money is the only thing that's going to make you happy. That is not what I'm saying. What I am saying, though, is choose your heart. You make that decision. But the law is written for everyone. Seek and ye shall find. Knock on the door, it will open. Get up, take action. Make the vision plain on tablets. I'm not making this up. It's been written. All you have to do is follow the law. All right, let's take a look at the next one. The slave. This one kind of takes people by surprise. And it took me by surprise, too. I did not know this. 
But it goes along the lines of some of the things that we're being taught, and we really don't recognize what we're being taught. So what do I mean by the slave? The borrower is slave to the lender. Never knew that. Didn't come up with that. It's written in the book. It's a law. The borrower is a slave to the lender. So let's take a deeper look at this. We've got assets and we've got liabilities. Let's look at what liabilities are. A debt or financial obligation. Also, a person or a thing whose presence or behavior is likely to cause embarrassment or put one at a disadvantage. That is a liability. And what I want you to do is start thinking of everything that you've wasted money on, everything that you've spent money on. Are you spending money on assets or are you spending money on liabilities? Here's the other part. Are you hanging around liabilities? Let's look at it again. Also, a person or thing whose presence or behavior can cause embarrassment or put you at a disadvantage, right? I've got a golden shovel there in the picture. See, what we've been taught is once we get our check, to start digging that hole. Pick up that golden shovel because that check shows up every two weeks and start digging. But see, the law states the borrower is a slave to the lender. And what are we taught every single day? Go borrow the money. Oh, just borrow it. Great, great interest rates. And here's, here's the fact of the matter is, yes, you may have to. I've had to. But when you start digging and you keep digging, you're going to end up with those golden shackles. That car is going to look real nice, but it's got you tied down. The credit card is going to buy a lot of nice things, but it's putting you in shackles. See, we've been taught to do that. But if you follow the law and understand the law, as the borrower, you're now making yourself a slave. And here's the sad part is they're teaching us to do this, and we're choosing to follow. Now let's look at assets. Assets, a useful or valuable thing, person, or quality of value that can be converted into cash that provides current, future, or potential economic benefit. Assets. So what are some assets? Things that actually appreciate. If you hang around a person that is a liability, then you can find people that are assets to you. You can be an asset to someone else. You and another person come together and decide that maybe you're going to put your money together, you're going to start a business together, and you're going to start buying assets instead of liabilities. You don't have to pick up the golden shovel. And I'm encouraging you tonight to really think about it. Every time that you spend money, are you spending it on an asset or are you spending it on liability? Because everywhere you look, social media, TV, we're teaching and we're being taught that we should pick up that golden shovel. But the law states the borrower will be a slave to the lender. So now you can decide, do you want to be a borrower or do you want to be a lender? Do you want to buy liabilities or do you want to invest in assets? So savings, investments, whatever it is, I need you to start thinking of it that way. Follow the law. The law is there for a reason. We've made our decision. We've decided to go out, seek, and find, knock on those doors. We've decided to make our vision plain on tablets. And while we're doing that, we're going to, in the process, we're now going to spend money on assets that are going to help us with our vision. Okay? I'm hoping you guys are getting this. Now, let's go to the next law, the crew. This is a big one. This is a real big one right here, the crew. Who are you hanging with? See, let's go over the law. The law states, he that walks with the wise shall be wise. A friend of fools shall become like them. So who are you hanging with? Who's your crew? If you're the smartest one in your bunch, you need to find a new bunch. So no, I'm not saying uh, cut all your friends off. I'm not saying don't hang out with the family members. What I do need you to understand, I'm very blunt with this. If you hang around five dummies, you will be the sixth dummy in that group. That's just how it is. I'm not saying it. It's written right there in the law. That's it. That's the law. Look it up. 
But he that walks with the wise shall be wise. So instead of being that sixth dummy, you could be the sixth wise person in that bunch. Now what can we do? Now where can we go? It changes everything. So who are you running with? You will become like the people you hang around. So I'm just encouraging you to choose wisely. A lion never has to explain he's a lion. People just know. He doesn't always have to roar. You know a lion when you see it. You know a group of lions when they're running. But you also know a group of idiots when they're running. It's just how it goes. I didn't make it up. It's written. It's a law. Let's review the laws one more time. We decided. We made a decision to seek out more, which is fine because the law says we can. Then after that, we made the vision plain on tablets because the law told us to. Then all we simply did was we started looking at who we're hanging around. Then while we're doing that, we're deciding to spend money on assets instead of liabilities. That means if the group of individuals that you're hanging out with are liabilities and they're spending money on liabilities, you're going to do the exact same. Put down the golden shovel. Stop strapping yourself down with the golden handcuffs. Follow the law. All right, let's go on. Here's the change. And this one might be tough for a lot of people because change is hard. It really is, and I completely understand. But let's look at what the law says about change. Converted, having been adapted to be suitable for a new purpose. As Ann mentioned, my brand is the KJ effect. My brand stands on this particular law. When thou art converted, strengthen thy brothering. I believe that. See, because I'm not perfect, and I've had the roller coaster of life just like you. You're not the only one that's been through something. You're not the only one that's had to struggle at all. We've all had to struggle. We've all been through something. But when I saw this, I didn't realize that I was actually living out this law. I just enjoy doing this. So when I am converted, simply meaning when you learn something, don't make it hard. Just help someone else. When I learn something, I do my best to try and teach others. When I understand something, I do what I can to help someone else understand. And these are just simple laws. I didn't write them. They were already written. All we got to do is follow them. And they're there for everybody. Who can follow them? Everybody. Everybody can follow these laws. They're that simple. So when you start to learn, you start to figure out what it is that you want. You've made that decision. Help someone else make a decision. I always tell people, just because you're not on my road doesn't mean you're on the wrong road. Find the road that's best for you. But once you find it and you decide, now start to seek. Get the map ready. Get the plan ready. Then what are you going to do? You're going to make it plain on tablets. You're going to write it down. This is what I want. Ask for it. See, the other part that I realize is that we don't ask for it. We're afraid to. But it's the law. It's just the law. Ask for it. Then once you ask for it, you make it plain on tablets, then you really start looking at it. Well, how am I going to get it? That's when the how comes in. How, how does it happen? Start to seek it. Knock on those doors. Take action. Then you start figuring out, well, wait a minute. I might need money. I might need resources. I need to start really looking at these, these assets. What can I do today that will help me next week? What can I do today that will benefit me next year? Then you start looking at your crew. I might have to reduce my time with a lot of people, and that's just how it goes. I didn't write it. It's in the law. Just follow it. But then once that happens, once you realize it, and the vision is now clear to you, imagine how many people you can help. Now you're converted. Now you see. You can't unsee what's there. Once you see the laws happening, it, it, you can't change that. You're converted. You see it. Now you take action. And that's when fulfillment happens. 
I love what I do because it's fulfilling. Because I can have a positive effect on as many people as I possibly can just following these laws. And yes, you will fail, but you're going to need to get back up. Look, if you're going through hard times right now, don't stop in hard times. Keep going. Get through it. Convert and then go pull someone else out of it. And I'm hoping this makes sense. I'm hoping you're realizing these laws are here for everybody. So when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Help someone else out. And for me, I was blessed enough to do that. In 2016, um, I was able to publish a book just about my story, the ups, the downs, um, some of the things that I went through, and ultimately it was the turning points. And what I realized is that um, things were tough, but it was an average way of living. So what is it like just being average? How do you get out of average? And a lot of that is, is in my book. These partners and resources, helping individuals discover their why, their purpose, is something I enjoy doing. So I'm encouraging you to do the exact same thing. Convert and help someone else. Strengthen thy brothering. Strengthen another person. Well, I appreciate your time. Um, thank you so much. I'm really hoping that you got something out of this. Anne? Oh, we all got a lot out of this. That was incredible, Ken. Thank you so much. Talk about the laws of success. Simple, but so, so difficult, so hard to do. But if you follow what he shared with us today, we are all going to be more successful, aren't we? Well, you know, I always like to close with a story. So I'm going to close with a story, and I think this is going to fit in perfectly with what he was talking about. And this is one of my favorite stories, too. It's called Growing Good Corn. Now, what does that have to do with anything? Well, just pay attention. James Bender, in his book, How to Talk Well, relates the story of a farmer who grew award-winning corn. Each year, he entered his corn in the state fair, and it won a blue ribbon. Well, one year, a newspaper reporter interviewed him and learned something very interesting about how he grew it. The reporter discovered that the farmer shared his seed, his good seed, with his neighbors. And the reporter asked, well, how in the world can you afford to share your best seed corn with your neighbors when you're entering the competition with each other year after year? Why, sir, said the farmer, didn't you know? The wind picks up pollen from the ripening corn and swirls it from field to field. If my neighbors grew inferior corn, cross-pollination will steadily degrade the quality of my corn. If I am to grow good corn, I must help my neighbors to also grow good corn. He was much aware of the connectedness in life. His corn cannot improve until his neighbor's corn also improves. And so it is with our lives. Those who choose to live in peace must help their neighbors to live in peace. Those who choose to live well must help others to live well, for the value of life is measured by the life it touches. And those who choose to be happy must help others to find happiness. For the welfare of each is bound up with the welfare of all. So, if you have something good, don't keep it to yourself, but share it. It is when we give that we receive, and so much more. So I love that story, but it's also exactly what Ken was talking about. It's the people that we hang around with. It's the people we surround ourselves with. Let's be that number six winner out there and not be part of the losing crowd. We all want to be successful, don't we? And I think Ken has given us those laws of success. So I hope you will pay attention to everything that he shared today. As a reminder, we have all of our programs on our website. We also have them on our YouTube channel. Please, if you go to YouTube, subscribe. Um, watch 
all these videos that we've done for the past several years now, and they're all free. But if you subscribe, when we get 1,000 subscribers, then we start to make money on that. So we're hoping that we will reach that 1,000 number soon, and you can help us with that. Now, next week, we have a very special guest, very special to me. He's actually my husband, and he is going to talk about uh, the holiday blues and dealing with grief during the holidays. When somebody is arrested, you are dealing with grief during the holidays. If you've lost a loved one, he's going to talk about that. Uh, Doug does work with hospice, and he also lost his first wife to breast cancer. And so he is well aware of grief, and he's an expert in the field, and I hope you'll join us next week. So it'll be next Monday, 6 o'clock, the same time, by Zoom. And look forward to seeing you then. So thanks for joining us. Have a blessed night, everybody. Bye-bye.